think the two real differences we'll see in the future is firstly a greater connection as if we're sort of inside the mind of the customer which will be a result of data insight, behavioural technology. And the second one will be the rise of ruthless capability. So tonight's talk's on, on the future of commerce. Uh, and we're very lucky to have a fantastic panel uh, with us tonight. This is the first in a, a little series of events Weapon 7 are going to be putting on, um, addressing trends in the market and passions that, that we have. And hopefully uh, they're going to be very practically focused and there's going to be lots of stuff that we can all take away with us and, uh, and use in our jobs. You have to find an authentic voice that creates desire, that's sustainable, profitable at scale in the customer. Otherwise, you're just waiting until someone gives you a job in the competitors who will survive. We've kept the title commerce rather than e-commerce because we think it's much broader than that. I think the really interesting area to look at actually uh, is the overlap between the bricks and mortar and the purely online experiences, the convergence that's happening in that marketplace, the integration of mobile and the many technologies that we've got. Uh, and um, we've got some really interesting sort of future-based trends that are coming up. We've got some really practical examples of what's happening right now. Will there be a future where we all have 3D printers in our house and we can print out exactly what we want? We can buy bl blueprints off the internet or we can create our own products and print them out there and then. I'm certain we're going to see a significant number of people who aren't online today get online and that's going to mean people are going to be reacting faster, they're going to be looking for more transactions and they're going to do more of what you know the sort of small number of us are already doing. With these virtual currencies, I can effectively give money to someone else around the world right now and have that transaction done at a fraction of the cost of what a bank will charge me. So that reduction right there will make transacting and e-commerce much more efficient. With online retail, we're seeing a lot of interesting things, but one of the main areas for us at the moment that we're looking at is the in-store experience. And the reason we're looking at that is it's not really been touched by technology to a great degree yet. The high street's going to become more digital, but actually digital may become more like the old high street in terms of personal service and contextualization. All research starts at online and everything is validated with our millions of visitors. Once you get past the simple A-B testing with button colors and things like that and get into more rich segmentation, the things you can learn about your customers, how they behave, what resonates with them, what offers they like, which offers they don't like, um, becomes an incredibly powerful marketing tool. And so you get this really, really powerful combination of data analytics and validating that through online testing. So I think those two areas are going to be very, very key for the future of e-commerce. I'd say there's probably more examples of brands who haven't done it well than there are brands who've done it really, really well. We're not sellers anymore. We are just digital sheds on the web. And in order to move beyond that, we have to build love with our customer again. We have to love our product in an authentic, genuine way. So I think for brands to succeed, they have to build a new connection with the customer to build that desire before you go looking for it online, offline, in a catalogue. And that's really the trend that we're seeing for the very best, that connection. Call it love, if you like.